and let's get started yeah so first of all um, let me give you a little bit of uh, background about who we are um, as most of you know uh, we are based out of Houston Texas and we've been in business for almost 10 years now um, and for for most of our existence uh, we were focused on the entertainment industry and um, you know we make this device um, that helps organizations record TV and you know TV shows and TV networks you know they have a huge use case or a need uh, for something like Snapstream and today you know we've pretty much dominated that market and if you turn on the TV um, it's pretty much guaranteed that one of the shows that you'll be watching is one of our customers so people like The Daily Show, Last Week Tonight, you know, NBC, CBS, HBO, um, all those guys use our product to record and repurpose TV for their shows. But, uh, so that's great, right? But about two years ago, uh, we noticed that, uh, you know, there is a good use case for something like Snapstream in the sports market. We saw that a lot of teams were using TVOs and other consumer devices, uh, consumer DVRs, to record games, and that that's that's not a very efficient process. And we knew that Snapstream could really help streamline those workflows. And in the last uh, you know 18 to 24 months, uh, we've made great progress, and we have a really good list of customers from you know NFL teams, NHL teams, MLS, um, as well as you know some really really well known Division One uh, sports teams. So essentially, Snapstream is a um, you know powerful DVR, right? So you connect your TV source into the back of the Snapstream server, and then you know the Snapstream server connects to your network. And everyone on the network will have access to the to that DVR. So it's like a networked attached DVR. Um, you don't have to go to the DVR to get a recording. You can access it from your workstation. And apart from the powerful recording features, um, we also have a ton of other cool features built in. And in terms of how sports teams um, and video coordinators like you use the product. There are a few, you know, very, very uh, clear-cut use cases. Um, competitive analysis, you know, you need, you want a way to record your games and your upcoming opponent's games um, and analyze that. Um, media monitoring is another use case, uh, meaning, you know, you want to uh, track what's being said about your team, your coach, your star quarterback, whoever. And, and also there's a new use case that's gaining ground, which is uh, the social use case. Um, teams want a way to engage their fans on social, and the best way to do that is with video content. Um, and this video content you can't pre-produce, right? It's live, it's happening at the moment. So um, Snapstream helps teams to, to grab these really cool moments from your games, and then push them live to Twitter and Facebook. Um, and, and keep your fans engaged. So I'm going to um, quickly go over um, this PowerPoint. The really cool part is in the demo that Brian will be doing. Uh, Brian handles uh, or, or works with all our sports customers. Some of you on the webinar may have already uh, spoken with Brian. Um, I'm pretty sure you know you guys have met us at CSVA um, and, and some of the other shows we are, that we normally go to. We'll be at CSVA um, in a couple of weeks as well. So if you want to uh, actually come to the booth and take a look at uh, what we do, you know, you are more than welcome to do that as well. But um, going back to the PowerPoint really quickly, you know, Snapstream essentially replaces, you know, all these different um, recording solutions like DVRs, VS, VCRs, and VHS tapes. Um, it allows you to record a lot of TV channels at the same time um, from a very easy to use program guide from your workstation. Um, and there's a really nifty uh, program manager built in that handles um, 
you know conflicts um, so you don't have to like really worry about all that um, and once it's recorded everything is searchable meaning you know you can actually do a search for your team or your coach and Snapstream will find all the places where those keywords were mentioned so if you have um, you know if you have if you want to do a search for your coach um, and then tell him all the places where he was mentioned you know it's easy as doing a Google search um, and this is really powerful and uh, you know Brian will take you guys through um, some of those use cases and once you found what you're looking for you can create clips from your workstation directly um, you don't have to like download the video and then you know open up a separate video editor to, to do that we have clipping tools built in um, so it's really easy to create these clips and then you can share them internally or you can directly post them to to social media um, and finally you know we also have <clears throat> what's called email alerts essentially they are like Google alerts but for TV so you can actually set up an alert for um, your athletics director or your program name and then every time that keyword that word or name is mentioned on any of the channels you are recording you know you can get an email you can set it up so that you you'll get notified immediately so that's uh, that's that's really powerful as well you don't have to be watching TV 24 7 you know the system will do that for you so you know I don't want to bore you guys too much with the PowerPoint um, let's uh, let's look at the let's look at the actual product and uh, I'm going to uh, have Brian Weissman um, actually do the do the webinar for do Good morning, everybody. Uh, as Guy said, uh, my name is Brian. Uh, thank you for joining today. I've spoken with many of you um, in the past, and uh, think that you uh, will, will really enjoy getting uh, to see the nuts and bolts of how Snapstream can benefit your organizations. Um, so, what we're looking at this morning is the actual Snapstream interface. Uh, everything here would be uh, pretty much. Uh, you know, apples to apples with what you would have in your uh, local environment. Um, it's just you would be accessing your server just like I'm accessing the one right here. Uh, you see it's called Snap Demo. So the first place that I'm going to go to if I, if I come back to kind of our home screen here is into the guide. And within the guide, uh, it's going to pull in all of my channel listings from uh, let's say that I'm in, you know, Tallahassee, Florida, for example, and I have a direct TV as my TV source. It's going to pull in whatever my lineup is, as you can see right here, no different than what you would have in uh, the living room of your own residence. Um, first thing that probably jumps off the page is that there are a bunch of red icons, uh, just like at home. You can set those up to be record. You can set up uh, recording tasks, and that's anything from particular episodes to certain time frames of the day or a particular channel 24-7. Uh, it's going to be as simple as coming in here, right-clicking, and I've got all my different options from watching that program uh, in real time to, as I said, episodically certain time slots or 24-7. So if we just come in here and Okay, sorry about that. Uh, I just realized that the screen had frozen. So what I was trying to describe in terms of uh, watching content in real time, you weren't actually seeing that. So now you can see uh, I'm on NFL Network. This program is airing, and I have uh, scrubbing tools on, on the uh, on the bottom and right side of the video content. Uh, down here, it's going to enable me to skip forward, uh, to skip back. Um, and then over here is, is kind of my marking tools where I can create a start point, I can create an end point, I've got my uh, social features over here, and, and we'll get to all that in just a second. Um, but the point being that you can 
uh, you can implement this as a program is airing or after it's recorded. Either one, it works uh, just the same. So if I go back over to the guide, everything that's been uh, set to record is then going to live over in the library. Think of, the, think of this as a digital archive that you're building up from scratch. And uh, so as you can see, we've got hundreds and thousands of hours of uh, different content that sits over here in the library. Um, and this is where the search uh, functionality, the, the power of Snapstream in terms of really getting to those needle in the haystack moments is going to come into play. So I've got a couple of examples that I'm going to use this morning. The first one is I'm going to type in uh, a search for Miles Garrett, who's, uh, you know, as, as you probably know, one of the top uh, draft picks coming out of Texas A&M. Um, he's, he's being discussed in terms of his workouts, just assessments, etc. Pretty generic search. If I go ahead and, uh, and type that in and then look for my results, just like I would do in Google, so happens that I get about 522 results. Um, so I can click into uh, you know, any of the pro programs, and it's going to take me to, uh, with about five to seven seconds of lead-in time, to exactly what it is that I'm looking for. So it's coming back uh, from uh, commercial here on ESPN, and um, here it is. Here's where uh, Miles Garrett is mentioned, and it's using, as you can see over here, the associated closed captioning. So if I just pause this for a second, you can see that it picked up Miles Garrett out of you know everything that's being discussed in this show. And you also see that there are six different points in this particular program where the search that I did uh, can be extracted. So I can click through to all six of these different moments where Miles Garrett was mentioned. Uh, I could do the same thing if I was searching for like Nick Saban or Crimson Tide or, you know, whatever is applicable. Uh, um, Bob Stoops, uh, particular players, particular recruits, etc. So I've got my, I'm going to go ahead and let this run here. And I can, I can clip this. So I'm going to create my start point my endpoint, and then we're just going to create a regular clip here. So I've uh, created a 20-second clip. I'm going to title, th title this Miles Garrett. Down here, I might tag this as Prospect NFL Draft, and uh, I don't know, Analysis, whatever. The nice thing about the tagging is the more effort you put into tagging, uh, the, the more beneficial it is down the road because that tagging can also be searched just like the closed captioning. So if you're trying to put together a, uh, a cluster of clips for a coach or for uh, other people in the department or just even for your own use, and you're tagging this with prospect, then I can come back into my library and I can do a search for prospect and it's going to pull up all those clips that I associated with that particular terminology. So Brian, uh, <clears throat> this is Guyan. So uh, we, have, we have a couple of questions. Uh, the first question is actually three questions. The first question is how many channels can I record and monitor at one time? Sure. sure. Um, to hold that thought for just a second. Let me let me just finish uh, this real clip, uh, real quick uh, clip example, and then and then we'll get to that question momentarily. Um, so I can clip this, uh, and then if I clip it, it's going to go ahead and uh, run a workflow in the bottom right of my screen. And then if I come back to the library, you can see on the left-hand side here your clips. This is where I'm going to be able to access all of that content. Um, I can download that clip. It will include the closed captioning associated with that particular segment as well. 
and I can repurpose it in a number of manners. Now, as far as uh, as far as the number of channels and uh, you know how much you can record simultaneously, et cetera, that really comes down to um, it's answered in a couple of ways, but uh, one way in which I want to answer it is actually going to our website because uh, I'm big on visuals, and so I want to show a diagram here um, that I think. will help out. So disregard some of this diagram here because uh, it's not specifically for this particular industry, but I, I like the I like the illustration um, in itself. So if you look at step number one here where it says choose your broadcast source, uh, to, a to answer how many channels you can record, that's going to depend on the number of sources that you have. So part one to the question is, um, it really depends on if it's simultaneous or not. The number of simultaneous recordings that you can make depends on the number of, let's just say, set-top boxes that you have. So in this illustration, if you have uh, four set-top boxes or four different TV sources, um, then you can be recording up to four channels at a time. If you have one or two set-top boxes, you can be recording up to you know, one or two particular channels at a time. Now, if we go back to the library over here, or to the guide, you can have one set-top box that is recording different programming at different time slots. It just can only be dedicated to one particular task at a time. So I hope that maybe clarifies that question. What else, what else do we have going? Yeah, so uh, so two questions. Um, the first question is, I think, related to what you just explained, and that's, uh, can the Snapstream box change channels on set-top boxes? Um, I guess what, what uh, the question is about is, you know, can you program the DVR so that it changes the channels on the set-top boxes? You, do, you don't have to be there to manually change channels. And the answer is yes. Um, so using your uh, using the program guide which we're looking at right now so let's just take uh, channel 212 and 213 as an example during the 11 o'clock hour if I'm concerned about recording the program on NFL Network box number one can accomplish that recording task if I don't care about it anymore at 12 o'clock and I only care about MLB network, then I can record that program from 12 to 1, and then I can move over from 1 to 2 to the program on NBA TV using that same box. Um, so you would facilitate it through our interface. Got it. Awesome. Cool. Uh, last question. <clears throat> so uh, I think uh, this is related with the search that you did previously. And uh, the question is, can you do the opposite in the search to clear content that doesn't have what you need. Example, you record multiple sports centers, but let's say none of them have anything you need. Uh, can you quickly delete all the content you don't need at once in a few steps, or uh, would the device fill up and run out of space? Uh, it's very customizable in in a, in a nutshell uh, to answer that question. So you can take it. You can go one of two ways. You can just let the system work uh, its uh, its process naturally, which is on a first in first out basis. So it's going to record all the content that you've asked it to. If you don't set anything up to be deleted, it'll fill up to its uh, maximum storage, which is a scalable amount. Um, and then it'll start deleting the oldest content first. You can also protect anything that you don't want to be deleted, and you can uh, you can set a uh, um, a functionality uh, or a workflow basically that let's say after 24 hours hours or after you know a certain amount of time at your discretion, then it, it'll just it'll delete that content. Um, so yes, you can easily delete things that are not relevant to you um, if you, you know, 
after a certain period of time. If, it, if it's only important for a couple of days, uh, you can delete it off the system. If you don't do that, it'll just automatically be deleted when it hits its max capacity. So if we come back to the library here, I, I want to get into the social piece for a second. Um, so going to uh, come and do a search here for the term offsides. And so I'm, I'm kind of combining a couple different things here um, to, to show you at the same time. So this could very well be a use case, just pause the video for a second, this could very well be a use case where uh, you know, you're breaking down some game film um, or you're finding specific plays or specific penalties or whatever. Uh, so I type in the word offsides, I come into this, uh, this game footage of Michigan at Iowa, and as you can see right here, just like I did with my Miles Garrett search, it's going to drop me into where it sees offsides because the referee is about to announce a penalty on number 13. Um, you see all that information in the closed captioning. So I let that run. Here it is. The referees are coming in to uh, collaborate with each other. And he is going to announce it. OK, so now I've created my clip. But instead of extracting that and, this, and just sh saving it into my library folder, I'm actually going to share this out via social media. I understand this might not be the exact clip that you would share with your followers, uh, but nonetheless, it's, it's the concept that we're reviewing here. So I've, I've marked my start point, I've marked my end point, and then I have a few different options here. Uh, as you can tell, these are not really uh, real functioning accounts, um, but uh, they, they do get posted out. Uh, so I'm gonna choose my watch live TV, or watch television uh, account with Facebook and then I can put whatever I want to into uh, the commentary here. And as you can see, I have my five second clip. Uh, important thing to point out is this is native video. Uh, so gonna get increased engagement um, because it's, it, it's you know, click and play right there uh, within the person's newsfeed. I can also take a, a still image um, and then I can post this out, or if I want to make sure I'm 100% certain that this is the content that I want to go out, I can cue this up and play it back in my interface and make sure, okay, this is exactly uh, the material that I want to send out, or if, let's say, we're in the third quarter of a game, or strategically from a digital standpoint, you know, you want to put something out at certain intervals of time throughout the day, I can make sure this gets posted out 30 minutes after the game ends, or 45 minutes after the press conference is over, or whatever the case might be. So I'll go ahead and post this, and just like with that other clip, it's going to run my quick workflow over here, and then that's going to be pushed out uh, to my Facebook feed for all the followers. Brian, uh, we have a couple more questions. Um, the first question is, um, can sources other than TV or cable boxes be plugged into Snapstream? I guess uh, the question is, you know, can I record a camera feed or an internal uh, feed in my building um, into Snapstream? Uh, the answer is uh, yes. It, it may or may not have that same closed captioning associated with the feed, uh, but we can certainly take in in-house content. We could take in stadium feeds. Um, we could take in uh, a variety of different things. Um, so uh, depending on your use case, you know, let's certainly talk about that. Uh, if you had something, you know, from, if you had uh, some, uh, footage coming from people on the sidelines and stuff that was getting pushed out to the uh, to the jumbotron internally or to the you know scoreboard in the arena or what have you 
uh, we could uh, work with that, ingesting that within Snapstream. Great. Um, last question that I have right now. Um, <clears throat> Snapstream looks great. Um, okay, that's, that's, that's awesome. Um, how many concurrent users can a system support? Can the same system be used by football as well as basketball teams? Uh, yes, is the answer. Um, the more detailed answer, I guess, is typically we haven't found that. Uh, so there's no there's no licensing associated with Snapstream. So uh, you're purchasing the hardware. Um, and how you use it is kind of up to you. We can sort of guide you and provide, you know, suggestions on how maybe the di digital department might use it differently from video coordinators of particular sports, from uh, coaches, from media relations folks, et cetera, but all of them can have access to it. Uh, I'll, I'll show you how you can kind of set up uh, security and permission settings in a moment, um, but uh, there, there should not be an issue from what we've seen with uh, with concurrent users. So if I come back to the social piece uh, for a second, this is where my content, it, this is kind of my hub, uh, my social dashboard, and you'll see that I've posted uh, six pieces of content and six tweets uh, to each of my different platforms. If I click on Facebook here, it shows me everything that's been posted out. So here's, here's my come on ref um, uh, post, and I can see the number of likes and retweets and comments associated with it. Uh, no one's really following that watch television page, uh, so hence you see zero. Um, but in your case, you know, you could have several hundred uh, pieces of, of analytics there uh, to really see how it's increasing engagement. And then just with the click of a button, cross-posting is, is made very easy um, between each of your different platforms. Uh, this is where um, my stuff can kind of be queued up uh, to look at before it's sent out or to, uh, to schedule when, it, when it's posted. Um, so this is your this is kind of your hub for the social piece. If we come over to the admin section, uh, this last tab on the bottom left, this is where you would configure your external accounts and give permission uh, to, to link those platforms with your Snapstream interface. Uh, a couple other things that I want to point out in the admin section. Uh, I mentioned security before. We have integration with Active Directory, uh, Novell, um, a lot of, a lot of uh, programs find that very useful. You can also just set up uh, your, you know, your permissions configuration from scratch as well. So I've got my LDAP credentials for uh, someone in the organization right here. And then you notice all these subgroups that are set up. So this could be my, you know, uh, social media interns. These could be my live TV viewers, uh, a number of different things. And if we look at administrators, that, that individual or individuals might have the highest level of accessibility to the system. So as you can see of the like two to three dozen different functionalities, pretty much all of it is turned on. Um, but if I don't want to give that group access to post stuff on Facebook, you know, I can easily uh, disable any of this that I want to. Likewise, under uh, live TV viewers, logically, if you look in here, most of the functionality is disabled because all I'm giving them access to is just to watch live content from within the guide. And then from a video standpoint, I also want to point out uh, workflows, which is exactly what it sounds like. Um, so you can customize any sort of workflows that you want to. Uh, this is one of the ways in which you can um, tell the system how long content should be stored for. So if I call this my uh, sports, workflow. 
I can have any sort of trigger conditions from when a recording is finished, a clip is created, you know, seven days after a recording, make sure it's deleted, et cetera. So let's say when a clip is created that I want to transcode that to uh, a WMV file um, and then I want to, you know, uh, also uh, export that item to a particular watch folder, et cetera. Um, there's an endless number of possibilities when it comes to setting this up to meet the um, workflow needs of, of how you're transferring content internally. Uh, Brian, we just got another question. Um, talking about exporting, how easy it is to how easy is it to download the clip from the library? Can I also download full recordings if I want to? Certainly. Uh, so if we go back to the library here, um, if I come into my clips and here's my download file right here. Uh, so it's it, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, also within the library, I have the ability to also uh, download um, in, in entire uh, recordings as well. Um, expanding, uh, last thing I guess um, to point out here is expanding on the search capability is alerts. And that's going to really make your life easy from an automation standpoint of stuff that you might want to be made aware of all the time. Uh, when I talk about you know cross departmental usage, um, this this could be a very attractive piece for your uh, sports information directors and your individual sports you know uh, points of contact in terms of like media relations and such. Um, so I can call this like my um, college sports alert and, and at whatever frequency, uh, so real time, daily, whatever makes sense for you. Every morning when I get to my office at 8 o'clock, uh, I can find out um, anytime, and keep in mind this is anything that's being recorded, uh, so it's extracting uh, any mentions from what, whatever you've got set to record, uh, but anytime the Big 12 is mentioned, um, anytime uh, the Final Four is mentioned, whatever the terminology might be, players, uh, coaches, whatever, the weather, it doesn't matter. It can get as specific uh, or as generic as you want to and you will get those results just like you see in the library except they're going to be delivered to your inbox with uh, just those relevant mentions that you've asked for. Um, yeah, so uh, that, that, that's a benefit uh, as well that's kind of like branches off of the search capability. I kind of refer to this as, as a pretty direct um, media monitoring functionality within the system. <clears throat> Great. Uh, so I have a, a question to, to the attendees. Um, I'm going to launch um, a very quick poll. Um, you know, Brian went through pretty much all of the major features. Um, and I'm going to go back to Brian in a few seconds. But, you know, if you have something like Snapstream, um, how would you use it? So there's, there's a poll question on your screen now. If you could take a second um, to, to answer that, that will be really helpful for us. So I, I do see a couple more questions as well uh, that I want to address. Um, in regards to deleting content, so yeah, if you're deleting a recording, that's independent of a clip that you've made from that recording. Uh, so the the clips would still live on the system even if you deleted the recording itself. Um, And yes, alerts are only going to be for things that are recorded. So coming back to the guide, I would say it's really important to 
um, let, let, let's say you have a box and sources that are capable of recording four things simultaneously, use it if you have it available because the more you're recording, the more you're making, um, you know, Snapstream becomes a, a, a valuable tool for you. Uh, if it's not recorded, then you don't have it, uh, you don't have that, you know, vast uh, archive within uh, which you can search. Great, and uh, thanks everyone for answering the, the poll question. Um, I just um, have the answers on the screen. Seems like it's uh, it's mostly, um, you guys are mostly interested in using this for media monitoring and also social. And, uh, you know, that pretty much aligns with uh, a lot of the feedback um, that we've received so far. Um, and, and, uh, and I think we have one more question, um, Brian. Uh, when a recording is deleted, does that also delete the clip that you have created from the recording? Right. Uh, so I, I think I just answered this, but um, it it's independent of the recording. Uh, so you can keep the clip, but delete the recording um, if you choose to. Uh, so we would certainly. I, I know it's kind of budget season right now. Um, I uh, I'm pretty familiar with uh, the ins and outs of uh, school systems, both on the academic side and on the athletic side. Uh, would love to get this as part of your workflow for the upcoming year um, in your departments. Uh, if you're, if you have further questions um, or want to dive into your individual use case uh, outside of this interaction, uh, please reach out to me. Um, I'll, I'll be reaching out to each of you as well. Uh, and uh, you know, if if you want to also kind of understand more about how it's being used at any of our existing customers, we can talk about that as well. Uh, so, if there are not any other questions, um, thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, we're going to stick around. Certainly, I don't have anywhere to go until my Easter egg hunt on Sunday. So, uh, I'll be here um, and uh, let us know what else we can answer.